men's medal in men's basketball. And we're underway as Argentina in the dark uniforms. Losers to the United States in the semifinals take on Lithuania, who are the number one team out of their group, but losing in the semifinals to Spain. And right off the bat, Scola missing a shot. Lithuania in control. Chris Carino and Steve Snapper Jones with you in our studios in New York. As Lithuania in the white, Lavrinovic, shot won't go, rebound Argentina. Well, the one thing that Argentina wants to do is get a little measure of revenge for losing the first game of the pool play to Lithuania. Uh, probably the most exciting game mm -hmm. in the tournament. And uh, get some medals. I mean, they still have a chance to get a bronze. And uh, it, it will be important for them to get a big game from Skola because there is no Manu Ginobili for the game. Well, that was, there's Manu Ginobili sitting down as Alberto puts Argentina on the board. Manu aggravated an ankle injury that he suffered in the playoffs in the NBA this past season. Played just six minutes against the United States and he's in street clothes now. And there's Shiskowskis getting to the rim and tying it for Lithuania. Well, th this is going to be a game of half-court basketball, mauling defense. They'll hold and chub and it's a team that can move and pass the ball that will win this game. They're going to get a good pass inside to the very... Did you see Carlos Delfino <laughs> against the U.S.? I mean, he was dropping bombs all over the place. He's still the coolest man on the planet. <laughs> and there, Lithuania ties it back up. Well, Delfino had 17 points and 8 rebounds against the United States, but the 6 of 18 shooting. He's currently in negotiations to get out of this contract and get back to the U.S. after that game. Oh, really? A scoop as Luis Scola hits. Snapper scooping. How about Luis Scola averaging 19 points a game in the tournament? That's second best behind Pau Gasol. Had 28 points and 11 rebounds against the United States in the loss the other day. At 31 earlier. So, I mean, Scola has been consistent and aggressive. And, uh, uh, you know, last year in the Fever tournament, he was the most valuable player. Uh, so he knows how to play in big moments. Now, Tuck is scoring for Lithuania. Ties it at six. Watch for their physical play. You talked about it, Steve. They had three players foul out of their semifinal game against Stain. Stain actually attempted 44 free throws in the game. I thought that that physical play was going to be the defining difference between getting a win or a loss. And uh, Lithuania coughed it up in that fourth quarter. And the Pau Gasol and Spain went on to get the win. Had a four-point lead going to the fourth quarter. Where do they run those bulls? <laughs> Pamplona? Yeah, because that's what's going to happen. In the gold <laughs> map. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You think you think that's going to be the running of the of they're the gonna bulls? Be running gonna for the, they're they're going to be running for their lives. That you know there'll be 12 bulls chasing these guys all through the streets of Beijing. Here's Argentina in the dark uniforms. Scola hit the underside of the rim, but Alberto there to clean it up. Argentina with eight to six lead. Four points for Alberto. Everything inside for uh, Argentina to this point. Yasekevich just can't hit inside, and he's down. Argentina plays on. Frigioni. Scola, the kick out Delfino. Frigioni, nice ball fake. Gets inside. Fight Scola for the score. And Yasekevich has not, never got back down the floor defensively as he was shaken up. Argentina with a 10-6 lead. Yeah, he's shaken up. Well, Sharunas Yasekevich is on the bench getting stitched up, patched up, bleeding from just next to his right eye. There was no foul call on the play, and that was a source of disgust as a three is good, a foul is called. Shiskowskis getting knocked down, hits the three, will go to the line with a chance at a four-point play. Uh, the Argentines are noted for physical play, laying a little wood on you, and so you got to be prepared to take the hit. That guy that is the trainer that is working on Yasukevich is just telling him, it's just a small cut. Don't worry about it. You'll be able to go. Just, just, just get your mind right. You know how fighters are? Yeah. They have blood well, pouring out, and the guy says, you're fine. They were very upset. Now, how could a guy get cut open like that? There'd be no foul call. That Skola shot missing. They can just tell Yesikevich is annoyed every second he's sitting on the bench getting patched up. Wants to get in this game. Well, let's find out whether that uh, really brings the fire out in Yesikevich and he goes on for a big game. And Shishkowskis missing that one. Six points, though, for 
the Baltic Pippin. <laughs> yeah, the Baltic Pippin is in it. I think he got on the right boat tonight, and uh, he's ready to roll. He did not play well against Spain. There's Delfino and Frigioni. Back to Delfino. Six to shoot for Argentina. And a foul. Stay right here, says Eddie Rush, the NBA official who's officiating this game in Beijing. Roll it off. Lavrinovic. <laughs> Lavrinovic. <laughs> Shishtoff. He got his money's worth in the last game. Fouling out. Delfino inside Alberto. It's obvious that Argentina thinks that they can beat Lithuania inside, and they're trying to penetrate at every opportunity. Delfino for three. Argentina on top. Five for him. Every time he makes a shot, you know what he's saying? I get a new deal. <laughs> Cancel out that deal I already signed. Turnaround hook shot won't go from Yavtokas, and then a foul is committed by Argentina. Delfino is going to go play for BC Kimki, one of the top teams in Russia. Unless, of course, you can get him a new deal in the NBA. Oh, he's, uh, he's already on it. I mean, the call has been made. Now. Get me out of this thing. Was with the Raptors last season. And a turnover, Argentina with it. He Mark. said, don't talk to Sam. Talk to Brian. <laughs> Brian Colangelo. Yeah. There is no Sion. Shot won't go. Lithuania with it. 13-10 leads for the Argentines. The defending gold medalist. As that shot goes down for Kalkanis. Argentina, the gold medalist in Athens, their only medal in basketball competition in their Olympic history. Well, you know, that last shot that Calcanus made is the one that he continued to pass up against Spain, took it into trouble, and had nothing but trouble having a good scoring night. No, uh, you, you, know, way off. you know, the United States said, you know, this Argentina team was the most physical team they played against, and uh, they were upset about it. So these Lithuanians are ready to get knocked down. Well, they take the lead, 14-13, for for Yavtokis. Argentina gave the United States its closest game, at least by the final score. It was a 20-point win for the United States. Got out to a great start in that one. And perhaps the United States relaxed a little bit when Matthew Ginobili went down. And Argentina made that a game late, but ended up a 20-point win for the U.S. Well, it was a huge first quarter lead. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I think that that's when they kind of relaxed and got a little bit sloppy. And Argentina got some momentum, got a little life, got within six, eight points. And uh, uh, the U.S. pushed it back out. But I don't think there was ever any doubt that they were going to win that game. Lithuania one-point lead in the first quarter. We're back after this. Bronze medal on the line in Wukasan Culture Sports Center in Beijing. 3.45 to go with the first Lithuania with their first lead, a 14-13 edge over Argentina. Chris Carino and Steve Snapper jones with you at our New York studios. As Argentina going to work, it's Alberto for Scola. Seven to shoot, Nocioni with it. Nocioni out to Delfino. Missing on a three, long rebound. Great right by Delfino. Scola! You know, you brought up the, the subject of the gold medal that they won in Athens, and prior to that, they hadn't won anything. So I think if they want to continue to prove to the world that they can stay in the medal. So they, this bronze medal is very important to them. Lithuania has a, a few of them, uh, but uh, we'll find out if they're motivated to try to beat this team a second time. Well, Lithuania has had five consecutive appearances in the Olympic semifinals, and they've never won. 0-5 now in the semifinals. They've taken three bronze medals, and Nocioni knocks down the shot there. Lithuania finished fourth in Athens, losing to the United States in the semifinals. You know, all of these Argentines, they, they look like wild gauchos. I mean, their hair is straight and stringy, and, uh, you know, they got a little thousand-yard stare look at you. So if you come in, they, they hit you with the whip and the forearm. <laughs> The Gauchos. Yeah. Well, you're probably frequented El Gaucho out in Portland, right? The Cowboy <laughs> Steak Place. Argentine beef, known as some of the yeah, best in the world. They have some of the best beef in the world. There's no Sioni hitting for three. 
And Argentina with a 20 to 16 lead. If you are a steak lover, and you look as though you are, if you ever go to Argentina, you will you will eat steak until your eyes roll. That's all they have. <laughs> Here's Jaskowskis missing a three. Well deflected. Delfino runs it down. But he turns it over. Now Canis with it. Lithuania seemed a little step slow on the hustle play. They need to pick up their intensity. Arcanis missing a three. No, Tioni grabs the rebound. You know, a lot of winning has to do with will. And it looks like right now Argentina's trying to impose their will on Lithuania by being physical, by getting all the extra balls, and winning on the scoreboard. Which they are. Yav Tokis with another foul. Here comes Yasukevich, yes, who is who is talking the minute he walks on the floor. It'll never stop. Well, it won't stop, but he's still mad about the non-call. Yeah, so, he is you know, annoyed. He, every one of these call, uh, you know, these calls where his guys get hit, he's going to be pointing it out. Roman Gonzalez checking in now, number six for Argentina. Delfino, Regioni over to Scola, and a three-second call. Now, that's a rare call that's made against Argentina, but they feel that they can dominate inside. Alberto was in there a week, and he got caught. This is Linus Kleza. No call. Here's a three. Good for Kleza. It's shooting at 42% from behind the arc, averaging 12 points per game. Kleza did not show up against Spain, so they need him off the bench to bring some spark. Uh, he makes it a one-point game. Scola got Yavtokis in the air. Now finds Gonzalez underneath. Back to Scola for the lay-in. Scola with eight points. Now what are they doing? They're going to wave it off. I think they gave them gold, but uh, Scola is, I think they called a foul on Scola or something. Looking directly at him. Another thing I noticed is that the Argentines can really grow hair, too, on their face. Their facial hair is all over the place. You're, you've, been, you've been all over the hair situation throughout these Olympics. Zoran Planetich wants to talk to you, by the way. Pass deflected away. Argentina comes up with another Lithuanian turnover. A couple of turnovers for Lithuania. They were hurt by turnovers against Spain at 18 of them. This is Prigioni. In the final seconds of the first quarter. Five-second different shot to game clock. Nice feed inside. Skull of the runner. Clock continues to move after a made basket. Absolutely wearing the Lithuanians out with high percentage play. And one for Yesikevichis with 2.1 seconds to go in the first quarter. Stitched up. Back in the game. Hits the runner and will go to the line. Well, he trying to dish out a little physical offensive play, led with that elbow and got away with it. Now you have a chance for a three-point play. Brizioni didn't like the call. Said he was trying to get out of the way. Free throw won't go. Delfino, desperation he. Oh, nearly goes. So Argentina led by Skolas 10, have a three-point lead after one bronze medal game in Beijing. Scola with 10 points to lead Argentina. They're looking for a bronze medal. Argentina, three-point lead after one. You see the battle scars of Yesikevich just already in this game. Had to be stitched up. Their fiery leader, Sarunas Yesikevich. Nearly turning it over. Klaza, though, gathered it. And then Petrovic just can't put it in. Got his own miss, and he got fouled hard by Roman Gonzalez. You know, sometimes when you see the international guys miss close, they're so concerned about the shot being knocked off, that they don't really work on the finish. I mean, you're right there, point blank range. You gotta go up with some authority, and they don't. Remember up next, 2.30 a.m. Eastern time, it's the gold medal game as the United States takes on Spain. Catch it live on the NBC network, as well as the Olympic Basketball Specialty Channel, and then Following that game on the specialty channel, we'll have the medal ceremony. As Argentina with a two-point lead. Argentina losing to the United States in the semifinals. 
Yeah, no Manu Ginobili in this game. Remember, after winning that first game, uh, Lithuania was 4-0 going into the last round of pool play. They gave that game away, so they would have to avoid seeing the U.S. And, and then really, they got smacked by Spain. And that was the difference in group play was that terrific game they had, Argentina and Lithuania, with Lithuania winning the shootout down the stretch. And the free throw good by Skola. Now, I'm expecting Skola to play with more authority for Houston this year than he did a year ago. You know, it, it was his first year, and I think the... Rick Allman had to adjust to him, but if you watch Skola play, this guy could be a huge help to McGrady and Yao Ming. Nice it's pass. Jaskowskis inside off the feed from the Essie Well, Skola, you know, he, he he got better as the year went along. He ended up averaging 10 points a game in Houston. Especially when Yao went down, he really picked things up. There's no Sione. Misses. And rebounded by Petrovicius. Yes, the has found Shuskowskis. Now Klaza. But it's Klaza. Kick out. Three nearly went down. Petrovicius is fouled. They get Frigioni, his second. But not without contact. The rebound right there, and they just smack you real good to let you know we're, we're not going to give you anything easy. Roberto back in the game. Scola gets his first rest. Had scored six straight points for Argentina. Mariona Petrovicius at the free throw line. We know that the NBA game can be physical, but this is, you know, WW, AF, whatever <laughs> what you want. I mean, they hold it. They grab, and it's just part of the way that they play. And then when they get a little under your skin, they just put their hand up and tap. <laughs> they do that in the WWE also. <laughs> There's Frigioni. What about Esther Kevichis? Leonardo Gutierrez from 12 is checked in for Argentina. Now, their, their scoring in the middle is not going to be nearly as good as it was with Scola, but Alberto working on it. Soft touch, but it rolls off. And Look, see, he got knocked down. Looking for the call. Lithuania in the white. Lithuania had won three consecutive bronze medals until the United States was the bronze medalist in 04. In their Olympic history. They have participated each year since gaining their independence in 1990 from the former Soviet Union. Largest of three Baltic states in Northeast Europe. Well, you know, there's one thing they wanted to show that the Soviet Union was benefiting from all of their good players. Hmm. There's Klaza with a runner. Delfino with it. This is Carlos Delfino. He took over at the FIBA tournament last year in Las Vegas. Missing a three there. Remember, Ginobili didn't play in that tournament. What? You know, Delfino is one of those players that uh, can play well in international ball but cannot play well uh, in the U.S. They Does it translate? They, they, no. Yeah, it's definitely lost in translation. Shows that three attempt by Gutierrez. You know, and that's, you know, if you're an NBA team, that has to be a concern about getting international players is that they can play well, they can look good. Uh, when they're playing internationally, but when they come to the U.S. and it's a different kind of ball, a different style of ball, uh, they don't make that adjustment. There are very few international players that adjust and play well at the same level in the NBA. Sivis Yusaitis hitting, giving Lithuania a one-point lead. Yusaitis, number 10 in the white of Lithuania, guarding Delfino right here. He came off the bench against Spain and had 19 points in 23 minutes. Gutierrez hitting from deep. Argentina, three of eight from behind the arc. And they regain the lead. Back and forth. 
they go with the Wukasong Culture and Sports Center in Beijing. You know, if you like half-court basketball, you're going to get your fill of it in this 40 minutes because neither one of these teams really looks to transition the ball. They're happy to walk the ball up the floor, set the offense, and then try to dig in and get a score. Argentina believes that they can score in the middle, particularly with Skola out on the floor. Delfino trying to fight his way through defenders. It goes out of bounds to Lithuania. Now, if Delfino was less cool, he would have gotten, <laughs> he would have gotten a call. You're all over the hair again, aren't you? Well, it's the hair. You know, Delfino doesn't even sweat. And <laughs> when you're when you're that cool and you played as much as you, you you don't get it. Looks like he could be playing in a tuxedo, right? Yeah. Here's Calcanus. Six so, to shoot. What Delfino will do every now and then is throw down an eye-popping dunk in a crowd just to let you know he can do it. And you may not see it again for another month, but I got it. Now, does that frustrate you as a, as a coach or somebody who's invested time and money in Delfino that you see those glimpses every once in a while, but you don't see him really taking over, becoming a star in the NBA game? Now he's going over to Europe? Of course. I mean, because he has a, a, a lot of talent. He's a very gifted basketball player, but uh, he plays on his own terms. And, uh, you know, when you invest in a guy and you think, well, maybe this will be the next Ginobili, there's a guy that could really play, and he plays to a different drummer. Gutierrez is sitting another three, a couple of threes here in the second quarter, and Argentina with a five-point lead. You don't think Detroit had big ideas about him? Sure. You know, the same thing with Toronto. You, you see the flashes, but you don't see the consistency. And it doesn't seem to bother him that he's not consistent. I don't think he ever really fit in with that Detroit culture. And that shot goes down. Again, Argentina. They've crept up. An eight-point lead. Quintero's knocking it down. A nine-nothing run. Lithuania off the timeout, go inside, and Petrovicius is fouled. As Argentina on a 9 nothing run, Steve. Every time uh, they have gone inside to Petrovicius, you see an arm around his arm. They're not going to give him any chance to score at the hoop. They're going to make him beat him from the free throw line. You know, Lithuania's got to pick it up offensively. they got to start moving the ball, moving people quicker, uh, because Argentina with three threes here in the quarter is starting to pull away. Well, Petrovicius, just two of five from the line in this game. Make it three out of six. Stops the nine, nothing run, though. You know how things creep into the sports garden? Okay. Can you give me the history of culture? Where did culture come from in the world of sports? You mean using the word culture in, yeah. in regard to sports? Yeah. Uh, you know what? Being around the Nets for a number of years, I'll give John Calipari credit. Why not? No, she only knocked it down to three. He used to say his big key thing when he came to the Nets was going to change the culture. What happened to we're going to change the way we play? That was good enough An economy of words. Oh, we went okay. from the way we play, <laughs> which would be the way we play, four words, we got it down to one, culture. Things evolve. You're an old school kind of guy, though. I know that. <laughs> You're reluctant to change. <laughs> Ten point lead for Argentina. Yes, the Kemish is hitting. Sharun is with six. Those shots are there for Lithuania. If they will take it right to that 15-foot area, they can get a shot uh, because the defense is sagged back off of them. They get in a little bit closer, they're going to take a hit. Roberto, extra pass out to Quinteros, turns it over. Yes, the Kevises, ugly transition. Argentina the other way, Nocioni, pull up three. Rebounded by Yavtokas, Lithuania with it. Nocioni is having a tough time finding the range, and that's a good thing for Yasekevich's and the Lithuanian team. A blocking foul going against Quinteros of Argentina. That also leads me to the thought of who invented old school, new school. <laughs> Yo, 
have a lot of questions. Well, I do. I mean, I mean, you're young, you're energetic, you know all these things. You gave me Calipari, so there must be someone <laughs> that decided that new school was better than old school. <laughs> It's a generational thing, I think. Here's Jesse Kavishis at the free throw line. Yeah, where's the dividing line, right? Where's the... How can you how tell? How far back does new school go? Or how keep can you changing? tell? See, the, 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 I think the dividing line comes with guys that think they can play, but they're only pretenders and they can't play. So we give them a category. It's a new schooler. He doesn't understand basketball, but he's a new school. So it's an indictment on the on the new school. Here's Quinteros knocking it down. Now you know to, to follow the thought of old school, somebody in the old school would say, we need to guard that guy. He's made four shots here in the quarter. We need to knock down that yeah, guy. Yeah, we need to, we need to put, put a little wood That's on him and school. make it difficult. Five threes in a row now for Argentina to take a 10-point lead. Pass inside, and Yavkokis can't finish. Argentina with it. Quinteros. Out top. Prigioni. Well, in the battle of physical defensive play, Argentina's winning the war uh, on the inside and now on the outside as well at the offensive end. Oberto. No call. That was Scola, excuse me, that Oberto missed the follow. Getting rough out there. Oh, Scola likes that kind of play. You know, you, you knock him down, he just comes back and knocks you down. He it doesn't mind. Siskowskis. One on one with Scola. Lavrinovic. Nice. Stuck under. Shot won't go, though. The rebound taken by Quinteros of Argentina. A stark difference. Now, if this were the NBA, they would have double teamed. They don't even worry about a double team. They just hit you. Quinteros connects from three. Little contact. Step back, hits a three. He's perfect from behind the arc. Nine points. Quinteros gives Argentina a 13-point lead. So it was Simas Yesaitis knocking out a three, cutting the lead for Argentina down to 10. Argentina in the dark uniform. It's Oberto. Go to work against the 6'11", Lavrinovic. And Lavrinovic blocks his shot. Leads to a breakout, but deflected by Quinteros out of bounds. The Sides. Up close and personal with the crowds at Wukasan Culture and Sports Center in Beijing. Now Sikevich is with that cut, but his right eye suffered that early in the game. No Joni back in. Gives him that crazed look along with all of that yelling and screaming that he's doing the whole time he's out there on the floor. They need him to step up and start making some shots. The side he's off the mark. No Choni the rebound. Final minute of the first half for the bronze medal game. Argentina with a 10-point lead over Lithuania. First Corrido, Steve Snapper Jones with you in our studios in New York. Carlos Delfino up top. Oberto over to Nocioni. Argentina again playing without. Manu Ginobili aggravated that ankle injury in the semifinal loss to the United States. And Quinteros falls down, slips and falls. Quinteros with three threes all here in the second quarter. Nine points in the game. He's been a big, big addition for them off the bench. Uh, you know, in a game that was close at the end of one three-point game, he's come in and knocked down some shots to the given Argentina this uh, ten-point gap. There's Yasekevicius. There's a seven-second difference. Shot to game clock. Hides around a screen. Yasekevicius missing. Skola. Strong rebound. Final seconds of the first half. Delfino to the rim. Delfino with seven points. Desperation heave at the buzzer hits the rim. Argentina, a 12-point lead at the half. Bronze medal game in Beijing. About set to start the second half of the bronze medal game in men's basketball at the Wuxang Culture and Sports Center in Beijing. Coming up next, the gold medal game as the United States takes on Spain 
That can be seen live on NBC and the Olympic Basketball Specialty Channel. And following that, we'll have the medal ceremony on the Specialty Channel. Chris Carino and Steve Snapper Jones are with you in our studios in New York. Argentina, a 12-point lead. They have the ball to start the third. Uh, Argentina dominated the first 20 minutes of play with their physical play, their ability to score inside. And if you're Lithuania, you got to make them shoot the ball from the outside and under some pressure. Shiskowskis. Nowhere to go and turned it over. And then a foul committed by Esikavishis of Lithuania. Now this is a guy that has to come to the dance. I mean, if they're going to have any chance to win this game, because he has the ability to score deep and medium range, he's got to be more aggressive in looking for a shot. Took a shot above the right eye early in the game. He's got it patched up. Here's Delfino. Delfino take it over for Manu Ginobili, who is sitting out with that ankle injury. This is for Gioni. A three. Missed it. Lithuania now with it. Lithuania has not scored in transition, and they need to be able to capitalize. Inside, Yavtokis. And it goes down. Second round pick of the Spurs in 2001, Roberto Yavtokis. Yep, Tokas had a big, big game against uh, Spain. He even made a lot of free throws. They can't give that up. The blow by there, Frizzioni, his first points. Point guard, who to this point, his first points, but has six assists. 12 point lead for Argentina. Shostowskis. Alberto might have got a piece to Nocioni. Fouls Yap Tokas. We should count the number of times they get a clean shot without getting hit because every time they get the ball at the rim, there's some contact. Argentina continues to smack the Lithuanians around. They got to be more aggressive, maybe, you know, lead with their elbows a little bit more and get these guys off of them. Well, it was Lithuania's game plan against Spain to be very physical with them, but Spain able to finesse them down the stretch and get the win. And now, obviously, running into a team that's just as physical as they are, if not more so, as Yavtokis knocks down on the free throw. Argentina with a ball and 11-point lead. To continue my food work. That's why they all eat that red meat. <laughs> Delfino following his own miss. Seven for Carlos Delfino, along with six rebounds, two offensive rebounds. is Shiskowskis up top for Calcanis and a foul inside against Alberto of Argentina his second you know a team that uh, we can all associate with Argentina is Pat Riley's Knicks they play that hand-to-hand -hand combat they hold they shove and they dare the officials to make every call and they usually don't get it done, and the opponent has to up their aggressiveness. So we'll see if Lithuania can uh, bring a little bit more fire to the second half. Argentina has come to play in this. Like, they want a medal. They want a bronze. Lithuania perhaps just a, a little down after the loss against Spain as that three won't go. A game they gave away in the fourth quarter. And a bit of a letdown for them to be playing in the bronze medal game. On the other hand, Argentina... You know, they, they gave the United States all they could without Manu Ginobili, and now they're looking to get out of here with some hardware. I think they all, uh, you know, when you watch all of the Olympics, getting a medal of any kind is very important. So you don't want to leave in fourth place. I mean, that does you no good. No, and, uh, I think the Argentines, they really want to go home with something, and Lithuania has to pick it up to prevent that from happening. Yav took his shot won't go. Argentina. Look at a build on a 15-point lead. Delfino. Off the mark. Rebound loose. Yes, it is for Lithuania. If there's going to be a guy to pick him up, it's Yasukevich's, but he misses. And 
He's has been the story for Lithuania. You know, they're a three-point shooting team, and they have not shot the three very well in this ball game. but Yasukevich is capable of striking uh, fire, so he's got to keep shooting the ball. I don't think he can suddenly become a team that's trying to score inside. So he's going to go down. Oh, the shot pops out. Lithuania the other way. They're just three of 13 from behind the arc. Yasukevich's. Now remember how many threes they made against Spain, and that was part of their life blood. Again, you see how they just knock you around. Ball knocked around. Lithuania attempted 31 threes against Spain. They were 12 out of 31. Skola. Runner. Goes down. Skola. Have it uh, Really, an aggressive offensive player, which is what his nature is. He looks to score points, so they got to try to find a way to get him something easy and get him going at the offensive end. This is Calcanis against Frigioni. Takes him into the rim and scores. Calcanis with six points. He's averaged 10 a game. You know, they're, they're trying to pressure, but they're not a good full-court pressure team. There's a deflection saved by Scola. And Klaza. Just a collision with Oberto. Klaza really playing with a chip on his shoulder in these Olympics. Well, he's seen a lot of his teammates get smacked. Yeah. One thing he's not going to do, he, he's not going to let them hit first. He'll hit first and talk about it later. I've seen a side of Klaza I didn't know he had from watching him in the NBA. You know, he's sort of just, he's sort of just been content to to play in the shadow of Iverson and Carmelo Anthony and Camby and that whole crew last year in Denver and just would come in and make shots and play hard. And, but he is, he's a feisty character out there in these wow. international games. He got an unsportsmanlike call there. That's why Argentina will get the free throws and then the ball. I mean, he understands that, you know, you got to fight fire with fire. And uh, his team is getting beat up and pushed around. And if you're going to get back in the game, and I think he's learned something from the NBA playoffs, you got to become the aggressor. you got to set the tone that uh, this will not stand. The whistle. There's a foul. It's going to go against Yosides, number 10 there, Lithuania. Third foul on Yosides in just 15 minutes. Yosides had such a good game against Spain, and he has been a non-factor. I mean, they've had too many guys in white that have been non-factors in this game up to this point, and I think a, a lot of it has to do with the attitude of the Argentines. You know, they're hitting you at every single possession, and the Lithuanians, who are supposed to be tougher, are getting manhandled. Scola, the driving shot, 16 for Luis Scola and Argentina. With their largest lead, it's 18. As Calcanis is fouled by Scola. Scola picks up his second. Scola gives a hip. He gives an elbow. He gives whatever it takes <laughs> to let you know that he's there. Here comes Leonardo Gutierrez. One of only six players remaining on this Argentine squad that were in Athens at 04. The 9-2 run for Argentina. This is Yosides over to Klaza. Poke loose and a foul on Gutierrez, who just checked in. Yeah, the whistles are coming a little bit more frequently now as the officials are maybe trying to tighten things up. Look at the reach. And already, Lithuania in the bonus. Less than five minutes into this third quarter. Coming up next at 2.30 a.m. Eastern, it's the gold medal game as the United States takes on Spain. It will be live on NBC and the Olympic Basketball Specialty Channel, followed by the medal ceremony only on the Specialty Channel. It's loose, and Lithuania comes up with it. A rare turnover as they try to pressure the ball, and what they want out of it is the score. Turnover's even. Calcanis. Foul, that'll give him free throws here. Gutierrez, another foul called against him. Third foul on Gutierrez in just five minutes of action. Timeout for Argentina. They lead 57-41, third quarter.
Some of the Argentine faithful in Wukasov culture at Sports Center in Beijing. Men's basketball, the bronze medal game as Argentina with a 57 to 41 lead over Lithuania. Uh, Nocioni was taking over the lead out there on the floor in terms of leadership. He's telling his guys, we can't let up. The good thing for Lithuania, they're in the free throw situation so they can score the clock stops they have a chance to eat into that lead so uh, if they just continue to be aggressive they have a shot at getting control of uh, the momentum in this game you look in front of the lithuanian bench in white top of your screen yes the Kavishis, he's on the bench but he's like a caged tiger he's pacing he's standing it's like he can't wait to get back in the game this glazer's shot won't go the rebound well, someone asked me what's wrong with Glazer. Glazer's taking a lot of bad shots. Mm. I mean, you know, when he takes shots where he can square up and look at the hoop or drive the ball, he can be a very, very uh, forceful offensive player. When he's taking turnaround jumpers, it's not going to happen. Gutierrez finds Alberto. And Argentina up by 17. Well, that's been the story for Argentina. Beat them inside and then knock them down at the offensive end. And they've been successful with that theme the entire game. Runner inside won't go from Lukauskas, who had just checked into the game for Lithuania. Actually, they're going to get that on. Excuse me, Lukauskas was fouled. Prisioni was the one who committed the foul. That's he the was third the assailant. foul. The assailant, yes. So when Machu they take him in for interrogation, they're going to show him this footage. They're going to say, that, that wasn't you, or did it just look like your brother? But it's the third foul on the Argentine point guard, Prigioni. It's Lukauskas, the star of Zalgiris in Lithuania, one of the top EuroLeague teams. Cuts the lead to 15. Prigioni will stay in there with three. Now, if you're going to pressure, you got to get all over the guy. You can't let that much space exist between you and the offensive player and then let him run and do whatever he wants. Now, it's too late to start knocking the Argentines around. But that's uh, the foul. There was, there was no attempt to guard here. Just push. The black and blue bronze medal match. Lithuania and Argentina. Argentina in the dark blue. Stelfino against Kleza. And a turnover. Palming. A little too cool that time for Delfino. <laughs> There's Kalkanis for Lithuania. Trying to force it and turns it over. Offensively, Lithuania just doesn't have a good idea of where they want to score the ball. I mean, when they get in the attack zone, there are shots available and they end up going the wrong way to the wrong person. The results are not good. Gutierrez missing a long three, but a long rebound. That's where long threes usually end up. It's Rizioni. Back for Scola. Slipped. Travel. Scola with 16 leading Argentina. Shiskowski is back into the game now for Lithuania. Argentina nearly didn't make it out of the quarterfinals. Was it for Spinoulis of Greece, his top of the uh, the key three that went in and out at the buzzer. Was it for that, Argentina wouldn't have made it out of the quarterfinals. It was a fantastic game now, the stretch that they played with Greece. There's Scola. Want to work against the shorter Klaza. Six to shoot, Delfino from deep. Carlos Delfino, he's got 12, couple of threes. And Argentina, their lead is 62 to 44. Three point shooting, 21% to 52%. And a steal and a bucket for Nocioni. And Argentina all over Lithuania. It's a 20 point game. Another look at the defensive play. And Nocioni has Argentina up 20. Oh, Yasukevich is walk slide a fighter. Let's see if he's ready to come out and compete and, and really be aggressive and make some things happen for his team. 
He's three for nine. He's got seven points. He turns it over. He had a shot. And a beautiful play by Quinteros to find Gutierrez and Argentina is at 22-point lead. Eight steals now in this game for Argentina. But Lithuania, the entire third quarter, has not had an idea where they want to score. There's no steal Cioni. number nine, Nocioni. To the rim. Argentina's blowing out Lithuania here in the bronze medal game. It's a 9-0 run to take this 22-point, the 24-point lead. Well, I guess the revenge factor is much bigger at Argentina's <laughs> end. <laughs> and they want to prove that they should have never lost to these guys from Lithuania. Argentina's only loss in pool play was to Lithuania. And they are just swarming on both ends. See the hustle. Quinteros, Fadi Gutierrez. And right now, Lithuania with 11 turnovers in the game, shooting just 38%, 3 of 14 from behind the arc. Even their free throw shooting, normally good, has been poor, 61%. And in this quarter alone, Lithuania has six turnovers, two of seven shooting over three from behind the arc. Remember, coming up next, 2.30 a.m. on NBC and the Olympic Basketball Specialty Channel, it's the gold medal game in men's basketball as the United States takes on Spain. And that'll be followed on the Specialty Channel by the medal ceremony. It is going to be live in every time zone, 2.30 a.m. Eastern, U.S. State. All Almost deflected out of bounds. Turnover, but uh, besides being fraught with turnovers, they just have not had a good offensive attack. No one is carrying them and keeping them in the ball game. Total of 10 points in the quarter. Lukowski is sitting at three. First three of the third quarter for them. Delfino easily breaks the pressure, but it's poked loose and a steal by Lithuania. Now Sikavishis came to the United States for his senior year of high school and then went on to play at University of Maryland, a couple of years in the NBA, and now playing back in Europe. Ragtag play, Lukowskis missing a three, kicked out of bounds, it'll go to Argentina. Prigioni back in. Pablo Prigioni took over at the point guard for the retired Pepe Sanchez. Pepe Sanchez was a problem for the U.S. in Athens. It was a problem for a lot of teams. Shot won't go for Gutierrez. Walter Herman, another player you might know from the NBA, also retired from international competition. We get a whistle and a foul there against Scola. Six players remaining on the Argentine squad from Athens at 04. Third foul on Scola. Here's Shoskowskis at the free throw line. Normally you would be concerned about Scola with three fouls and a quarter to play, but they have built such a big lead and to this point in the ball game. Uh, we have not seen any kind of game plan that would disturb Argentina and keep them from getting this victory. Rizzioni will reset. Four second difference. Shot to game clock. Winding down the third quarter. Rizzioni for Delfino. Missing on a three. The tip won't go from Quinteros. Final seconds. Lukowskis a three. No good. Argentina looking for a bronze medal in control. Fourth quarter coming up next. Argentina starting the fourth quarter with a wide margin but Lithuania going to work as Kalkanis scoring inside try to see if they can get something going here at the start of the fourth quarter if they're going to have any chance a foul there is committed by Yusaitis it's still a disappointing effort through three quarters for a Lithuania squad that I know Steve we expect a lot more from in this game we did we expected to see uh, three quarters of 
what we saw in the first quarter of the ball game where it was tight, it was competitive. Uh, the Argentine uh, fire just overwhelmed Lithuania, and they have not been able to get anything done. I think the physical nature of what they're doing at the defensive end has disturbed them. And a turnover, though. Brigioni is saying, you didn't see him hit me? Come on, you got to take a look. <laughs> Brigioni, seven assists in this game. You know, we had a look at the stats and as many turnovers, turnovers as they have made. That goes down for Calcanis. Four in a row for Calcanis. To finish the thought, as many turnovers as uh, Lithuania has made, they have not given up a lot of points because of those turnovers. They've just given up a high percentage, period. They just haven't shot the ball well. As Nozioni back into the game, replacing Quinteros. And over the next four minutes, if somehow Lithuania could get some sort of momentum going, they would still have a chance to pull this game out. But uh, if they're going to give up wide open shots. Like that, a three to Delfino. Now look at Delfino. Is he sweating yet? <laughs> He's got 15 points. Three threes in the game. Machulis. Shot good over Gutierrez. First points for Machulis. 23-year-old. Getting some action here. You know, when you're pressuring, what you're trying to do is create a sense of panic in your opponent. And Argentina doesn't seem to be too ruffled. And so that's not helping Lithuania. See Manu Ginobili in street clothes with the ankle injury. It'll be interesting snapper to see. He uh, injured that ankle in the playoffs last year. A big part of why they didn't get to the finals in the Western Conference. His participation in this tournament was in doubt because of that injury, but he aggravated against the United States. Now there, there is that possibility. He could need surgery on the ankle, which would hurt the San Antonio Spurs. You know, after the game that against US, the U.S., he immediately called Greg Popovich, his head coach, just to to talk to him because he knew he'd be worried after watching what happened against the United States. I'm sure they're hoping surgery not going to have to happen for Genova. There's Scola. You know, when you have a pre-existing injury, it seems like you always get hit on. So I'm making my way back and everything is fine. I can't get hit anywhere but on my ankle. And so it just, it's one of those unfortunate things about trying to play through an injury. They well, called Popovich because he knew he'd be worried. I don't know if no, he'd be mad. Pop he felt, <laughs> felt any better about it after the conversation as the Asaiti shot won't go. He, 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 wasn't, he wasn't having any, but I told you I didn't want you to play in the first place. And to give me this phone call now when you already heard. Third foul on Nocioni. Nocioni and other guys been hobbling around, a right knee bothering him. Here's the Asaitis missing. Scola deflects it. That has been an issue with a lot of the NBA teams. You know, Mark Cuban's very vocal about the fact that they want Nowitzki to play. We've seen with Yao having come back very soon after uh, that stress fracture, and he was hobbling around toward the end of this tournament. Skull has got four personal fouls. No, I mean, yeah. it's a tough position for the players that play internationally. They want to go back. They want to play for their country. And... Um, you know, it, it puts them in a tough position because the way this game is played, which is a very physical game, you can get hurt. And, uh, you know, if you lose a key player uh, as an NBA team, you're saying, you know, we, we, we can't compete because we don't have all of our squad. And the NBA team, the U.S. team, excuse me, as Machiulis knocks down that turnaround right there, 14-point game. Full court pressure here. They break it. Here's Nocioni taking it to the rim. They'll go to the free throw line. But the U.S. team, Steve, is so deep that when guys get a little nicked up, they can afford to sit them out. They have somebody else take their place. A lot of these other countries here, like Germany, Argentina, Lithuania, you know, one of those star NBA star type players comes in. He's got pressure to play through injuries and play a lot of minutes despite the fact that he's a little banged up. Yao was a perfect example. I mean, he wasn't going to let down his, his country in its Beijing Olympics. He was going to play through whatever ailed him. There's no Sioni at the line. Makes the 
excuse me, this is the first. Just getting back. He pushed himself so he could get back to Beijing and play for his country. And all of these guys have a great sense of pride about playing for their country. I think we've seen that infectious attitude rob off on some of the guys in this year's uh, Olympiad for the U.S. What was that? <laughs> Deflection out of bounds. Sometimes you can't analyze things like that. You must ask the question. You're just throwing it out there, huh? You're just, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 did you have any idea? You know, did you have any idea what you wanted to do? And that's been really the big problem for Lithuania here in the second half. They just haven't had an idea where they want to score. Oh, Kalkanis, a tough shot inside. 12-point game. Well, Kalkanis uh, has come out and driven the ball to the hoop and uh, has been successful. They need scores, but they're having bodies knocked down on the press. And a ill-advised quick three by Quinteros leads us to a timeout. Argentina's lead has been cut to 12. Don't go anywhere. You see Andres Nocioni going in for a steal and a dunk. That was the story of the second and third quarters as Argentina built a 24-point lead. But since that time, Lithuania has gone on a 15-3 run led by Kalkanis and Machiulis. They've combined for all 10 of Lithuania's points in the third quarter. And it's as close as we've been in quite some time. Argentina's lead down to 12. It's the bronze medal game in men's basketball in Beijing. Chris Carino and Steve Snapper Jones with you in our studios in New York. Lavrinovic over to Kalkanis. Shot clock running down. Machulis missing and Delfino the rebound. The one thing that Lithuania doesn't get with all of that size. Delfino scoring in a driving shot is a lot of second opportunities and that's because the ball doesn't move enough and the Argentines are all inside uh, so they're able to get to the ball plus they're pushing and shoving. 17 for Delfino matching his output against the United States in the semis. Machulis can't hang on to that and it goes to Argentina. Yeah he pleaded please ref call the foul. You want to him grab my arm and, and you, you know the 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 uh, Argentine. Is that your impression of Jonas Machu? That's what I heard. Right. <laughs> oh, court pressure now. Delfino easily to the front court. Well, a couple of buckets, and that kind of takes the air out of uh, Yasukevich's and the Lithuanians. I mean, you've got to really be aggressive in trying to force them to do something they don't want to do. Employ some of their tactics, reach in, grab, hold, but you got to force some turnovers and some mistakes. Regioni hitting. Four for him. Back up to a 16-point lead for Argentina. Now, when Lithuania beats uh, United States in the full play, uh, it was Jasikiewicz who had a tremendous uh, offensive game. Shot the ball well from the outside, and uh, he has hardly been a factor in this game. And there's a three. It goes down for Lukowskis. Not the United States. The United States hasn't lost the game this time. No, 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 no. This is in Athens. Yes, in Athens. I mean, I mean in the right country. <laughs> United States lost three times in Athens. There's no Chioni. That must be a test, like how many houses do you own? <laughs> well, we're not supposed to get political here. Just asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> Clays are coming back in. Yeah, you're talking about Yasukevichis. That was... You could also talk about his game in Sydney against the United States, a near upset there. Remember, they almost lost the game in Sydney. He had 27 against the United States, missed a three that could have won it. And that one goes down for Lavrinovic, and a foul is called. Not done just yet. Well, Lavrinovic's first I mean, field goal. If you looked at the time on the clock, almost five minutes to play, if they make this as a three-point game, with that Scola with another foul, and that would mean he is done? Yep. Five fouls, Luis Scola fouls out of the game, 16 points. 
second leading scorer in the tournament. His night is over. And Lavrinovic can make this a 10 point game. But he missed the free throw. 13 of 21 from the line in Lithuania. Normally a very good free throw shooting team. Delfino. So they've got a play here the last 450 try and hang on without Ginobili and now without Skola. Here's a three by Brizioni. Won't go in the rebound to Lavrinovic. Lithuania can cut it to single digits. Yes, it Kevishis. Inside, trying to force it, and Prezioni comes away with it for Argentina. You know, I've always said I'd rather see a shot taken than the ball get turned over. I mean, even if it's a bad shot, you at least have some hope that it might find the rim, but they have not been able to do it here tonight. Gutierrez. Can't get it to go. You see the emotion of the Argentine bench. Matter Ginobili in street clothes pounding a towel into the seats after that missed shot that nearly went down it was a could See, be a big swing as Nocioni now commits his fourth well you you, you look at the Argentines and the, the thing is you're gonna call that you can't call that You've been doing this the whole game you didn't call it now all of a sudden you want to blow the whistle four on Nocioni Lithuania with it in the white Lukauskas missing a three Badly, Alberto the rebound. Delfino, guarded by Calcanis. Delfino, pounding the dribble. Gutierrez, deep three, hits it. Manu and Scola can only watch, but they're loving that one. A 14-point lead again for Argentina. Gutierrez with 11. He's made three threes. Well, Delfino using almost all the shot clock before that ball gets away, and uh, they get three out of it. Clays a check. His feet step back but miss the three. And now Argentina with a ball at a 14-point lead. Time running down on Lithuania. Well, the, the big problem for Lithuania is they're not a team that can force turnovers. So uh, Argentina pretty much has their way with running the clock down and then trying to get a shot in the air. Delfino draws the whistle. Calcanis the foul. But the tone of the game was set right from the first quarter when... Uh, Argentina went inside the Scola, Alberto, uh, and then they just started knocking Lithuania around. And they never really got themselves into the second, third, uh, and briefly they got into this game here in the fourth, but it has been Delfino and Argentina controlling the tempo and the attitude of this game. Delfino now with 18 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists. Sergio Hernandez, the head coach of Argentina. Seeing Delfino step up to 25-year-old who's going to be headed back to play in Europe next year after playing in the United States of the NBA. Last season averaged nine points a game with Toronto. He's going to be playing in Russia next year. 80 to 64 Argentina. 245 remaining in the bronze medal game. Calcanis. Calcanis has been the only consistent offensive threat that they could count on. Seven of nine shooting 14 points for Calcanis. They break pressure easily. And a foul. Calcanis fouling Prigioni. His second. Remember, coming up next, 2.30 a.m. Eastern, live in all time zones. It's the United States and Spain playing for the gold medal. He's seen on NBC and the Olympic Basketball Specialty Channel. That'll be followed by the medal ceremony only on the Specialty Channel. And if we can take anything away from this bronze medal game, I think, uh, you know, you saw Argentina be aggressive from the outset, and they set the tone for how they wanted to play and get the victory. I think we'll see the same thing in the gold medal game with the U.S. playing against Spain. Now, the U.S. dominated Spain in pool play. Do you think 
Can they win by 37? Will, will, will you expect anything differently in the gold medal game? Not really. Uh, I mean, I think that, you know, Spain watched how effective the zone was for a while. And they will probably try to employ some of that. But what gave Spain the biggest trouble in the game against the U.S. was that pressure at the point of attack. The United States are going to come out pressuring that ball. They're going to try to force turnovers. They're going to try to run the floor. Especially with, uh, with Calderon. I don't know his status for that game, but you're going to throw those two youngsters against <laughs> I know the United States. You're dying to tell me that, you know, Ricky. The Spanish pistol. <laughs> he might be. Uh, I don't know if he's got any ammunition to go against the big guns of the United States, the 17 year old and their other 20 year old point guard. And that shot won't go. The tip knocked around. Saved. Lavrinovich out to Yasekavichis. Hitting. Too little, too late for Yasekavich. Uh, you know, I, I think the guy that needed to play for him, the Baltic Pippen didn't bring it tonight. No. Yasekavich didn't bring it. And against this team that's been the aggressor, uh, Argentina has. Now, look Offensive at Delfino. Foul on Delfino. I did fine you to find some sweat rolling off that man's face. Now, he has played most of the second half, but they not a drop. Well, Ginobili hasn't played, but uh, he's going to need a shower after the game because yeah, he Ginobili. has been up and sweating on that bench. Uh, Ginobili has sweated a whole lot more than Delfino, but Delfino has had a solid game. Alberto fouling, uh, is knocking it out of there. Block shot by Alberto. Third block for Argentina. There's the Baltic Pippen hitting a three. Shuskowskis. Well, he got that nickname because he's a guy who can score, rebound, defend. He's got all those tools that, that Scotty wants to use. I, I understand how he got the nickname. <laughs> it's just that he has not delivered like a Pippen performance in this game. I mean, no. again, when we talk about, you know, what's important to you, playing well on the world stage for a medal should be important to all of them. And yet, the Lithuanians had a very casual approach to this game from the end of the first quarter till now. Now they're trying to make this run to make it look like, well, the game was closer than it really was, but they just never had their act together in the second and the third. The fourth quarter here, they've out, finally outscored Argentina, but they left to get a 20-point lead. 13-point lead now for Argentina. Minute and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Yes, it Kevitsis. No, Sioni diving on the floor. Nearly knocked out of there by Delfino. Now, Prigioni finally comes up with it for Argentina. Well, that's a microcosm of this game. Who yep. won the ball the most? And the Argentines did. Delfino missing on a three. But you can see the celebration has begun on the Argentine bench. There's 11 steals in this game for Argentina. Out of the 14 turnovers of Lithuania. You see, they care. <laughs> this, this, this was a big game to them. It was really important. And you can tell from their reactions. You know, in baseball, they now created this new category called holes. I wonder how many holes Argentina had. Um. <laughs> and knocking these guys off the shot and everything else like that. Maybe that'll be the next stat you'll have to give uh, when you start doing the games again during the season. <laughs> holes. <laughs> There's a free throw by Machiulis. What do they come up with these guys? Uh, you're an old school guy. You don't like the new the new wave stats. <laughs> Free throw is good by Machiulis. Full court pressure by Lithuania. I I'd like those things to have some meaning and some meat. And sometimes they don't seem to do anything. So if you're in baseball and you get in the game and your team wins the game, you get a hold. Well, back in, in, in the day that, that you followed baseball, they didn't. Starting pitchers just went eight innings, and then another guy came in maybe in the ninth inning. and Or Completely. one guy came in and pitched the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. There, were, there, were, there wasn't any need to keep stats for holds. Complete game was the stat yes. that they wanted. 
Well, Argentina's played a complete game here. But they have. I mean, they, they came out, and as I said before, by the celebration on the sideline, you can tell that this was an important game for them. And even though they did not get a chance to defend their gold medal, getting something is better than going home empty. I think it was important to that guy, too. Yes, the Kevish is I don't want to... I don't want to... It downgrade how though. much that that initial shot that he took to the eye in the first quarter could have affected his play in this game. But if you've got any kind of competitive four of eleven nine points, you got any kind of competitive fire after you get hit in the eye like that, you shouldn't be taking this. I mean, this is worse. So not only to end up with stitches, but the beating as well. Nearly a steal. I'm downplaying it. <laughs> uh, you can't you can't take away from the, the enthusiasm that guy plays with as Delfino is fouled in the back where you just see the frustration on yes uh, yeah but I mean you you can only do so much with talk and he has talked a lot but he has delivered very little yes is fouled out of the game we'll come back conclusion of this one right after this Delfino with a free throw. Argentina in the final minute. On their way to a bronze medal in the 2008 Olympic Games. As Yasekevich's yes, shot won't go. He can just throw up his arms in disgust. A frustrating game for Lithuania. It started out so promising for them. Winning their first four games in group play. Losing to Australia in a game that was meaningless. But they sort of cruised a little too much. Did beat China in the quarterfinals, but a loss to Spain, blowing a lead in the fourth quarter, and now they will lose the bronze medal to Argentina. Well, you, what hurt them more than just missing shots was they didn't really have a good game plan. They didn't know where they wanted to go to get the scores at the offensive end against the team that was setting the tone right away. We're going inside. We're going to keep coming inside, and then we'll start knocking them down from the outside. Uh, Lithuania got somewhere in between, and it turned out to be a costly mistake. 12-point lead for Argentina, led by as much as 24 in the second half. Delfino has been brilliant. It's in his hands. He slips at a traveling call. Without Manu Ginobili, Carlos Delfino has stepped up with 20 points and 10 rebounds. Three assists. And Sergio Hernandez, his squad bouncing back from a loss to the United States in the semifinals to claim bronze. I mean, Scola is hugging everybody, a hug Ginobili. I mean, you know, this was an important game to him. And just tell by their reaction, they didn't want to get shut out of the medals. Argentina in the final seconds. The defending gold medalist in 2004. They'll settle for the bronze, but they are joyous. A bronze medal for Argentina. A tightly contested first quarter led to a blowout. Right after that, Manu Ginobili, without him, they're still able to take the bronze. Well, they had some real genuine emotions involved in winning this game and being happy about it. Well, Steve Snapper Jones, been a pleasure for our entire crew. And Steve, I'm Chris Carino in New York. Argentina, the bronze medalist.